Hello Internet, welcome back to our tutorial series. Last episode we talked about farming. Not feeling super good about that episode. Felt like I really dropped the ball there, but hopefully you understand what I was trying to get across to you. You know, I don't even feel like bandaging my wounds. Just send me down. Just send me to sleep. Just want to sleep. Head headgear. Wear the headgear so we can sleep through the noise. We are dead tired, unfortunately, which means we're going to sleep for a long time. Uh, we never really talked about, I think, we touched briefly on the settings uh, for, for being tired. You'll be tired, then it'll proceed to dead tired. And then I think dead tired, you know, I don't know what comes after that. Um, but it's not good. You want to really, in general, try to sleep when you're tired. You don't want it to progress. The mood penalties, the um, the the uh, morale penalty of being dead tired is very significant. I'm pretty sure you can fall asleep while driving, depending on how tired you are. So in general, it's better to just avoid that entirely. My computer is whirring up every time I sleep now. It's uh, it, it the computer gets really active. I'm wondering if the recent updates have um, if there's more stuff being processed, and I just don't know it. I should probably record an experimental cataclysm video this week. I know they uh, basically have released helicopters at this point, which is a huge deal that lots of people wanted for a long time. I just don't know that I care that much. I think helicopters are way overrated in a game like this. Um, although I think that there, I mean, I understand that there's a ton of value there. I just, I'm one of the people who's like, really most survivors would never understand how to fly it. And you see a lot of people comment like, well, you can do anything with autopilot. And I just think that's a real dumb argument. Because, uh, you know, if you put me in a cockpit of a plane right now, as smart as I am, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to be able to fly it. Even if you tell me, you know, you see, you hear sometimes about how people, you know, uh, in movies or whatever, they, they land the plane. where They talked him through it. He landed the plane. I'm sure that could happen. But if you just put some random dude in a cockpit and said I need you to take off and land safely there's just no freaking way um, so when I hear people say like oh well my survivor is smart I can just learn it from a book it's like mm, no you can't there's a reason people take you know classes and and fly many hours with a supervisor before they're ever trusted to fly alone and all that kind of stuff we did not pick up our battery we did not reload our welder Start putting in some cargo spaces. I believe we put all of the... Yeah, I think we've put all the roofs on at this point. Unfortunately, really the only way to test that would be to cover up our full windshield. Why don't we do that? We need to cover the windshield anyway. So let's go grab some sheets. Um, which, again, most easily grabbed from windows. We tear down the curtain. Always take the long strings and we get two sheets per curtain. So we'll go ahead and just yank these down here. No curtains on that one. Still don't really get why some windows have curtains, some windows don't. I I guess in real life, not everyone has curtains, but like, it just seems weird to me that you would put curtains on some windows, but not others. Um, like I totally get not putting any curtains in your house, but to have some in some places and none in others is just peculiar to me. So to do this, we go to the windshield, we install a curtain, and we're gonna need a curtain for every tile of the windshield. You'll see this is very quick. Um, it's always bothered me, this actually requires Mechanics 1 to do this, uh, and that's never made sense to me. It's literally putting a curtain up. I don't understand why that needs mechanics, but it does. So drop the sheet, we don't need that. Back to wielding the spear just because we're out and about. Um, so now, if we close the doors, and we have all the curtains closed, you'll see it's completely dark in our vehicle. This is good. This means we have the vehicle completely insulated. Again, that means having non-transparent parts all around us, um, and that includes the curtains on the windows make them non-transparent, then having a roof over all interior sections. So this is classified as an indoor space now, so that means all we need to do is put a bed in here, and we would be able to sleep in this vehicle. Now, if we open the curtains, they open all at once, just like our rear doors do, uh, which is nice, because it used to be you had to close them one at a time, which was 
a little annoying. Uh, so we can just open those up when we want to drive. Like I said before, some people have issues with the fact that they can't see out the rear of their vehicle um, and sides of their vehicle. You'll see the only area we can see is directly in front of us. I circumvent that by opening my doors. Um, I know that that means more enemies can get in at us, but I don't really care about that. It's usually pretty tolerable. And if I know I'm going to be driving through an area where the enemies are, you can just close these front doors and you can still see decently well. You can still see behind you if you need to back up. Pretty straightforward. If an enemy is going to jump in your vehicle while you're driving, it's going to be in the doors or at an angle. So when our vehicle is at an angle, um, there are gaps in between. Are there any angled vehicles nearby? No. Um, when your vehicle is at an angle on a diagonal, there are actually cracks between that the enemies can slip through. So if the enemies are going to jump in your car, it's going to be in your doors and it's going to be through the cracks. Them coming in the rear as you're driving forward is never happens really. Um, it only would happen if you come to a stop or back up into them or something like that. So not a super big deal. Uh, so let's put these cargo. What else? Well, let's get the bed. We actually need one more curtain, I think, to make the bed. Alternatively, we can pull the bed out of the ambulance, uh, and it will just give us what we need. What, what do we need here? Metal sawing. Small but comfortable bed. You can sleep here comfortably. Store items here, but there's no place for a seat belt, so you get thrown from the vehicle in a crash. Well, you shouldn't be sleeping while a vehicle is in motion anyway. Um, particularly in the apocalypse. Apparently a bed requires a seat, which is peculiar to me, but okay, that's fine. So we'll go ahead and install a bed back here. Uh, we don't really normally, so the way I lay things out, usually I keep the absolute rear for storage, um, just because it's easier to walk up and dump stuff in the rear of the vehicle. That's not strictly necessary because we can set up zones so anywhere in our vehicle will function as storage as long as we're nearby but the bed i usually try to put closer to the middle or front of the vehicle so i think we'll take out this trunk what do you have in you fraser and the engine what do you have a crap ton of frames and stuff why did i put you in here i would like you to get out of my vehicle unfortunately we can't do this very easily because you can't haul in a vehicle so we'll just no i want Select, yeah, uh, and we'll move those to the door, yes, and then we'll move everything from underneath of us out of the vehicle, so that should be it. No, there's still stuff on the ground. My neighbor apparently has decided to mow his lawn, which is freaking infuriating because I'm recording. Uh, it is like 73 degrees outside, which is absurd. I'm sweating bullets. We're at eight minutes. I really can't call the episode. Oh God, I hate this. Uh, this is one of the issues with, so we're gonna, I'm gonna take a break here in a second, right? So don't don't get all upset that I'm not stopping. I'm gonna stop in a minute. Um, this is one of the really negative impacts of one, not really having any kind of insulation going on with from sound. I have no soundproofing or anything. Um, and then two, my microphone picks up all sounds. So like we will frequently hear sirens car horns, car engines outside, people yelling outside. I have a very cheap microphone. It picks up all sounds. So I'm going to put a cut in. Uh, I'm a little furious about it because that means I'm going to spend the next 20 minutes not doing anything. Um, but yeah, that's that's going to... I'll be back. Okay, I think they're done. So let's go back to whatever we were doing. Uh, I think we're installing a bed. Yes, yes, yes. Um, it's, don't these people know how important I am? Uh, no, it's uh, jo joking, of course. It is a little frustrating when, you know, you have a certain amount of time and then you sit down to do it and something doesn't work out. You know, I often feel that way when uh, my family is making a lot of noise in the house. It's like I have, you know, a certain amount of time where I can record and uh, it, it's, it's difficult because it's like partially is entitlement, right? And I don't like uh, acting entitled. So on the one hand, it's like, who am I to say you can't go about your normal business? Um, but on the other hand, it's also like I have time constraints. And uh, with YouTube in particular lately, I've been really falling behind in my footage. As I record this, I think I have two episodes left of the series to go up. So 
you know, uh, if I sounded entitled, it wasn't intended as such. They, of course, have every right to mow their lawn. But, uh, yeah, it's just a little frustrating. And it's so hot today, so it's like I'm just irritable from being hot because it's just, I hate, I hate the heat so much. How are we doing on our battery? Needs recharged. We, at this point, I am comfortable going to the lab and um, looting the lab. Perfectly fine. All I wanted in this vehicle really was the bed. I wanted a, a secure rear end um, so that it was would block light so that we could safely sleep in the vehicle. I wanted some cargo spaces for our loot. Now, again, if I were doing this all at once, which I'm not, I don't want to uh, because of the time constraints, I want to push towards the lab as early as possible so that we don't encounter lots of really high-end zombies. So... Normally what I would do, I would extend this probably one tile further so we had another row of cargo spaces. I would remove these trunks and replace them with cargo spaces. I would remove the seats, replace them with cargo spaces. When we did the boards, um, alternatively I might have done stow boards. They function as boards so they, do, they still block the light, but they can also store a small amount of material. So oftentimes I will put my important stuff on the interior and then like clothes and loot that I don't really care about I would stash in the stow boards alongside the vehicle because if they get damaged and break and we lose all the clothing it's not a big deal but let's say we had our tool pile out there and we take damage to the point where this gets destroyed we lose all of our tools that's a huge deal so we I usually install those on the interior now like I said these vehicles are a little bit more durable than people give them credit for the likelihood of actually breaking a stow board and losing all that stuff is not very high but it's just an extra precaution. Why wouldn't you take the extra precaution? We'd remove the seats. They don't do anything for us. Um, I would eventually put a forge in here, probably. Um, you can get by with a portable forge, but I do like having a vehicle forge in the late game. We would put a welder in here so we could weld using the interior battery of the vehicle. So if we install a welder, we would be using this battery charge instead of constantly swapping batteries. It's a real quality of life thing, especially once you get a lot of solar panels and storage batteries. You basically have infinite electric charge to work with. It's not costing you anything to, to just quickly do that. So vehicle welder is a high priority for me in general. Forge, not as much. Um, eventually, we're going to put an autoclave in here. An autoclave is something that sterilizes materials, for usually for, for surgical purposes. We use them for bionics in this game. We'll talk about that when we get there. So we're eventually going to need an autoclave. An autoclave will also require us to have a water tank on the vehicle. So we would want to install additional tanks. Since we are working with a gas engine, I would love to fill this tank a lot more than it currently is. And I would love to even install secondary tanks to have even more fuel. Some people create tanks that are fuel full of pine needle tea and things like that that they know they'll drink constantly. I try not to min-max so much, so I like to drink lots of beverages just kind of for role-play reasons. So for me, I don't usually put beverage tanks on, but again, we need a water tank for the autoclave. And in general, it's good to be able to carry water with you just so that for cooking and things like that, it's, it's easy. Speaking of cooking, we would want to install a kitchen unit into this vehicle that would allow us to cook from the batteries charge instead of starting a fire like we have been. We could just cook directly on a hot plate in the vehicle using electric charge. It would also allow us um, a faucet so that we could draw water if we did set up a clean water tank or whatever. We could drink directly out of the tap, fill things directly out of the tap, stuff like that. Um, what else do I usually put in my vehicles? This turret means nothing to me. Um, I would probably just take the turret off at some point. This this is nothing. This is not... I've never used turrets in the game. We're not going to do a tutorial on turrets. I don't know how they work. I don't want to know how they work. Again, just like with the helicopters, I feel like there are certain things that should be beyond a survivor's capabilities. One of those includes installing automated turrets. I don't feel that the average person should have the ability to do that. Um, so that's something that kind of bothers me, and so I don't play with that. Just like uh, we talked about helicopters... I think helicopters are cool in real life. I get why so many people want them in the game, but ultimately for roleplay reasons, I don't I don't know that I'm going to use them. Like uh, maybe maybe because they will make traveling huge distances pretty easy um because like currently if we tried to drive over here there's probably like tons of forest in the way that we can't do. But ultimately I'm I'm probably not going to really use helicopters. So like 
I think earlier I said I should be making an episode on them. I don't really want to do that because I don't really want to learn how they work. I don't really care. Um, but people are going to expect that, so I probably will end up doing that eventually. Additionally, like we discussed, I would like to put a RAM on it. But for now, that's not really something I care about uh, doing. So let's drive this back to base, and we're going to gather supplies for making our trip to the lab. Um, you know what? We're just going to back the whole way up. I don't really see any reason to try and swivel our vehicle. Again, with a vehicle this length, turning can be a little bit tricky. For instance, if I swing out, you'll see there was an instant where we went from completely vertical to diagonal. This is what I was talking about before, by the way, where zombies can slip in the diagonals of your vehicle. Because here you can see there's a gap here. Even if this door was closed, they could still hit us through this gap. Um, additionally, when you turn, you'll see it instantly went from vertical to diagonal. What that means is that if there had been a vehicle here, we would have collided with it. If there was a wall here, we would have collided with it. And so turning, and it's the same way if we continue backing up, we'd turn even more uh, and even more, and it's instant. It's a very quick shift from diagonal to vertical to horizontal to whatever. And so that's that's where you will end up bumping into things. And so turning in a vehicle like this can be problematic. Oh, I'm stopped. Don't be stopped. Let's head back to base. So um, turning can be an issue, especially in narrow areas. Um, but for the most part, once you learn, basically I would just recommend slowing down. Let's not hit a tree here. We did not hit a tree, which is great. Um, slowing down will allow you to turn much more sharply. So in general, try to turn at like four or eight miles an hour. It just saves you some trouble. Let's uh, eat, drink, we're tired again. Um, it doesn't really matter if we go to the lab during the day or night. It's not really gonna make a difference. I would really like to put another battery in this. I wish we had more solar panels, but we haven't really seen any, unfortunately. Um, and there's really nothing you can do about it. It's uh, You can't manufacture a solar panel from scratch, which makes sense. Again, should be, is, should be beyond our ability as a survivor to create solar panels, something that requires very precise manufacture. So, so there's really nothing we can do about that. We could just put a bunch of car batteries in it um, to have additional battery stores. We may do that on our way back out there, but batteries... Car batteries are so low in the number of charges, they only have 2,500 charge. Whereas a solar panel, I don't really remember the number, but I think it's like 50,000, or maybe it's just 10,000, I don't remember. But it's significantly more than a car battery. Um, so we really would like the um, storage batteries, but we don't have that option. So we're gonna be going to the lab. What do we need for the lab? We're gonna need tools, which is taken care of by our toolbox. We're also going to want to take our jackhammer we never sorted things go ahead and sort our loot um, just because we have picked up a lot of stuff we're gonna want our tools so we're gonna need a jackhammer <sighs> did I drop it in the vehicle where's my jackhammer oh hello Zambi where did you come from didn't even see you there multi-tool yeah okay um, did I put you in the vehicle Frazier Where's my jackhammer? Uh-oh. Does it not count as a tool? It definitely counts as a tool. Is this not my tool pile? Hammer? Uh-oh. Jack? Uh-oh. Uh Internet? <sighs> okay. Um... Where would I put my jackhammer? We can look at all items nearby using the capital V menu. Oh, it's not, oh, because we have a filter. Yeah, clear the filter. No, clear the filter, search for a hammer. Okay. Uh, uh, I've lost my jackhammer. Huh? Maybe we dropped it up here. Oh, this is really bad. Please have a jackhammer. Okay. Um. Hmm. Well, I'm going to look at the footage and see where I lost my jackhammer. Because that's super important. 
So at some point we may have picked some stuff up or had to drop something. And it may have dropped somewhere in the world. Welder. Oh boy, that's real bad internet. We really need that jackhammer. Um, okay, we will figure that out. Uh, in between episodes, I will look and see where we dropped our jackhammer. Hopefully I can find it. It's going to be very tedious to have to look through. But we'll we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Fingers crossed. Anyway, hopefully we didn't drive over it and destroy it like an idiot. Because that would be absolutely de devastating. Both mentally, emotionally, and in the context of the game. But let's ignore that for now. Uh, we're going to need tools. So we need our toolbox. We're going to want a flashlight. Flashlights are pretty crucial in clearing the lab. Um, it's really the only time that I use flashlights. We'll even take a backup flashlight. So we definitely want flashlights. Um, we're going to want batteries for the flashlight. Since we have uh, a recharger in our in our vehicle, we don't necessarily need to take batteries. But now that we have a proper vehicle, I do like to pick up all non-disposable batteries and place them in the charger. That way, um, they will be charged over time anytime we turn on the battery charger. So we'll drop the light batteries. Plus, then we know where they all are. So anything that's not disposable can be recharged. So we'll drop all those in there. We'll even unload our welder and drop that in there as well. So now our batteries are in a specific location. Um, and again, that's a storage container. So there's plenty of room in that for, for all those things. What other tools are we going to need? I always will try to take a fire starting source on my person. Refillable lighter is a good one because we can just put gas in it if we need to. Um, so the flashlights are crucial. We can drop the entrenching tool uh, and the multi-tool. We're going to want to take our noise-canceling headgear because there's going to be a lot of noise in the lab and we don't want to wake up. Uh, in general, I will take a sewing kit um, and thread if we can get thread, but I don't think we really have thread. Are there... No, there's no strings. We have a bunch of strings. Let's go ahead and gather some thread. We'll do this again by butchering short strings because it's the fastest way to get thread. Um, and we're going to want not a ton of it. We can source thread in the lab, of course. There's fabric in the lab we could source. But I'd really rather just take a full sewing kit and then a little bit of extra. That way I don't have to look around for curtains and things and all that. So for sure that, why don't we, um, while we're here, since we have rags as well, we can just repair this really quickly. Um, again, there are rags in the lab. It's not like it's impossible to find clothing and whatnot. Uh, we're going to damage it. Stop. I didn't mean to do that. Um, but some materials like leather are going to be harder to find. So um, if we can repair all of the gear before we go, uh, while we have these leather patches and stuff in the base, uh, we might as well do that. So keeping those in tip-top shape is good. Um, in general, it's pretty good to take some crafting materials in case you need to make something once you're there. I will often take the home wrecker, which will be down here. This is this an ammo pile? That looks like, oh, it's an arrow. I thought it was a pitchfork. Okay, let's look for the home wrecker. I guess we didn't make a melee weapon section. It's good to have a heavy duty weapon for smashing some things. Um, we have the spear, which we can repair with our welder, so we don't need to worry about a weapon. Guns, not super relevant. Once we get into the lab, we're definitely going to find some guns that are going to be better for us what we will do is take a 556 rifle with us do we have the sig yeah i usually play with the sig 552 the reason for that is because the uh, 556 223 ammunition is very common in the lab so we're going to have basically infinite ammo for that gun once we get there so taking that gun with us has some value always take medical supplies there are again are in the lab but we're going to take some just to be precautious we'll take a first aid kit We'll take like a bunch of aspirin and um, we can make bandages once we're there. Finding water to make bandages could be an issue. So we'll take those extra bandages as well. We even grab the bottle of antiseptic we've been using. But again, the first aid kit contains most of that. We're going to need food and drink, preferably things that are not super perishable. Um, why don't we just take a bunch of the chicken cans? I'll take some, Oh, you know what? We have all these MREs. Just take the MREs. Obviously very portable. Um, foods and we're gonna come out here and drop some of this stuff so we can get it started 
Now using the sorting zone, you can assign zones and attach them to vehicle parts. Like let's say we wanted to make a tools pile. We could set it to here and it will prompt us to bind it to the actual vehicle space. So if we hit yes, it will then be not putting them on this tile. It will actually put them into the cargo space. So it will go when we go with the vehicle. Um, we're not going to do this right now because we're close to base and I really don't want overlapping vehicles. Uh, or overlapping zones, because if we have two tool zones, it might put them where we don't want them. So I'll just, for the time being, drop all this stuff in one pile um, and get them out of here. Definitely need the welder and the welding goggles, sewing kit, flashlights again, very important, home wrecker. Um, okay, another thing to think about is that we, as soon as we get in, we'll be dealing with a turret. Now, I'm not sure if one five, five, six round is enough to kill a turret, but you really need to kill them in one shot. So what we're gonna do is pick up a shotgun because shotguns are very high. They're the highest damage type of gun, um, at least at this stage, what we have available. Now, you know what, we have a 50 cal. That's a little bit overkill though. So we'll just take the, the shotgun, um, which would be the best. We're gonna look for anything that has a plus to damage, 54. Thought they were closer to 60, 51, 56. Yeah, I think 56 is 64, but you're using Winchester, you're a rifle. That's a lot of damage though. Still, shotgun shells are more common. Give me the 56 shotgun, should be fine. And we will reload that as well just to put some shells in it. Um, if you don't have a shotgun, it's not that big of a deal. You definitely, definitely want uh, to have a firearm of some sort. You can kill turrets other ways, but really the best way is to just step in and shoot them when you have the opportunity. So I would highly recommend not going in with melee. They will absolutely murder you. Um, if you don't have a shotgun, any rifle will do if you have a higher damage rifle. Like I said, we found a 50 cal that will guarantee basically the kill on that turret. Um, even a 5.56 rifle that we have here, the SIG 5.52, probably is enough damage to kill the turret, but I would really rather just get, you know, as much as I can safely without expending really rare ammunition. Like the 50 cal is rare ammunition. I'd rather not spend that. If we were going the ultra safe route and you were brand new and you didn't know what to expect, yeah, go the highest damage that you have available to you and guarantee that you get the kill. Um, so there's that. We're going to want a surgical tool for dissecting to get bionics. We currently have the pocket knife is not optimal. We would rather have a scalpel, never found a scalpel or an exacto knife. We do have exacto knives, so we'll take an exacto knife. Um, we're going to need again, food and drink. We took food in the shape of MREs. We would also like to take some water. I'll take some more MREs just because. Uh, we would like to take some water with us. So why don't we grab the gallon? Nope, oh, GAC is not the correct way to spell that. Gallon of clean water we'll take. Um, we're gonna look for another gallon jug because I would like to take a little bit more. Again, there's water in the lab, um, but we don't have a safe place to start a fire in a lab at the moment we will probably take our brazier with us and that will enable us to create clean water once we're there. But in general, I like to take some with me. So we'll take some empty gallon jugs here. We'll start a fire and we'll make some more water. Um, I know that this is all pretty basic stuff, but it's all stuff that I would like to have with us in a lab. So make some clean water. Oh, we are apparently very low on water. So we will Dispose, store and inventory. Pour in a container, just enough to fill that up. Let's grab some of these gallon jugs, head out and refill our water source. Again, don't necessarily need to do this, but it's something I like to be prepared. So we fill up two gallons of unclean water, jugs of water. Then we will make clean water in portions of 15 to fill up the gallon. <sighs> breathing in smoke, always exciting. Gallon jug, and we'll do that again to craft for the other jug. He's assisting us with crafting, great. We're not going to be taking our NPC with us. 
Obviously having a little backup is nice, but I don't feel like babysitting them because I don't know the real capabilities of the NPCs yet. And I'm afraid of, um, basically I'm afraid that we'll get him killed. So I'm hesitant to do that. So we have food, water. We're gonna take the brazier. Firewood is plentiful, that's not a concern. We just need something to store that. In fact, can I just make a different brazier? That way I don't have to take mine with me. Um, we can leave one here at base. We've grabbed medical supplies. Books, it's tricky. If we think we're gonna need to craft, then we wanna take books with us. If we don't think we're gonna need to craft anything, then we don't need to take our books um, because the main reason we would take them is for crafting. Now, it's the lab you can clear day and night. So it's not like you need to take something to read. So like, oh, when I have downtime, I'll just read. If we have downtime, it'll be because we're severely injured. And if we're severely injured, we're just going to leave and come back to base for a while. We're not going to live, you know, at the at the lab that whole time um, because we're close enough that we would just come back to base. So I don't really see a reason to take a lot of these with us. We can take some if we have some downtime, like the first aid book we were trying to read um, will give us something to read. Modern Rifleman, it's good to raise rifle skill. We'll just take those for the time being so we have something to read if we do have downtime. If we knew we were going to be crafting something, like let's say we went over there and we decided, hey, we're going to make the vehicle welder while we're over there, then we would take the book that has the recipe in it so that we could work towards that. But we're not going to be doing that. Other tools we would need, soldering irons help you deconstruct things. So a soldering iron. We have most of the tools we need in our toolbox, so I don't really foresee that being an issue. Toolbox has a hacksaw quality. So I'm sure we're forgetting something because basically every time I do this, I forget something. Take the MISC repair kit, even though I don't think we'd need it. Take a rubber hose, even though I don't think we'd need it. Uh, we'll keep the jack in our vehicle, but that's not the jack we want. Um, so I'm sure there's probably stuff I'm forgetting because I always forget, but I can't think of what they are. So we're just going to roll with it. Um, having some scrap metal and scrap materials is beneficial. Like if we need to repair our spear, we need scrap metal. It's pretty easy to get those things in the lab though, or in most locations. Now you can drop the brazier as well. Um, so I don't think that that's a super big deal. Oh man, I feel like we're forgetting things. Uh, other than the jackhammer, of course, which I, again, have lost. I don't suppose it's in my basement for some reason. Uh, gonna have to go pour through the footage until I find the jackhammer. So for now, I think that's it. Um, we have food, we have water, we have medical supplies. We have a couple books. We have tools that we would need. The toolbox helps a lot with that. We have all the medications we would need. I mean, we don't have like an antifungals and it's it's a good idea to take some radiation medication, but we don't have a lot of them. We'll take a couple. Um, and we'll take some heavy duty, duty painkillers, although we'll be able to get those in the base or in the lab. Um, other than that, a way to raise your mood can be helpful sometimes, but I don't care. I mean, we'll take the MP3, I guess. I think that's it though. So, yeah, I think we're loaded up to the point where I feel comfortable heading off to the base, base or uh, to the lab. Labs are fun. I'm excited to be looting a lab. Um, we're going to eat, sleep, and drink and all that before we go. Uh, and then other than that, we're going to head off to, to the lab. So, fingers crossed I can find that jackhammer. If I can't find the jackhammer, then that's... Uh, that's the game, ladies and gentlemen, because uh, I don't know what we would do without the jackhammer. We'd have to go hunting for another one. So for now, thanks for watching. I'm going to go hunt for that in my footage, and uh, I'll be back with more in the near future. We'll be starting to loot the lab.